The sky pours water. The stars darken. The bows rush about. The bones of the earth god tremble. There's still the Pleiades when they see Una's appearing animated as a god who lives on his father's and feeds on his mother's. Unas is the lord of wisdom whose mother knows not his name. The glory of Unas is in the sky. His power is in the horizon. Like Atum, his father who begat him, when he begat Unas, he was mightier than he. The cause of Unas are about him. His attributes are under his feet. His gods are upon him. His ray are on his brow. The guiding serpent of Unas is in his forehead, and his soul beholds the serpent of flame. The powers of Unas protect him. Unas is the bull of the sky who conquers according to his desire, who lives on the being of every god, who eats their entrails, who comes when their belly is filled with magic from the island of fire. Unas is equipped. His spirits are united. Unas appears as this great one, lord of divine helpers. He sits with his back to Geb. It is Unas who judges with him whose name is hidden in this day of slaying the oldest one. Unas is the lord of food offerings, who knots the cord, who himself prepares his meal. It is Unas who eats men and lives on gods, lord of porters, who dispatches messages. It is Grasper of Horns, who is in Ko, who lassos them for Unas. It is the serpent, he whose head is raised, who watches them for him and who drives them to him. It is he who is upon the willows, who binds them for him. It is the wanderer who slaughters the lords, who strangles them for Unas. He cuts out their intestines for him. He is the messenger whom he sends to punish. It is he of the winepress who cuts them up for Unas, cooking for him a portion of them in his evening cooking pots. It is Unas who eats their magic and swallows their spirits. Their great ones are for his morning portion. Their middle-sized ones are for his evening portion. Their little ones are for his night portion. Their old men and old women are for his incense burning. It is the great ones who are in the north of the sky who place for him the fire to the kettles containing them with the thighs of their oldest ones. Those who are in the sky serve Unas. The cooking pots are wiped out for him with the legs of their women. He has gone around the two complete skies. He has encircled the two regions. Unas is the great, mighty one who has the power over the mighty ones. Unas is the figure of a god who endows with divinity the great figures of the gods. Him whom he finds in his way, him he devours for himself quite raw. The protection of Unas is before all the noble ones who are in the horizon. Unas is a god older than the oldest. Thousands serve him, hundreds offer to him. A warrant of appointment as the great mighty one is given to him by Orion, father of the gods. Unas has reappeared in the sky. He is crowned as lord of the horizon. He has smashed the vertebrae and the spinal marrows. He has taken the hearts of the gods. He has eaten the red crown. He has swallowed the green one. Unas feeds on the lungs of the wise ones. He is satisfied by living on hearts and their magic. Unas rejoices that he devours the spsu, which are in the red crown. Unas flourishes. Their magic is in his belly. The dignities of Unas are not taken from him. He has swallowed the intelligence of every god. The lifetime of Unas is eternity. His limit is everlastingness. In this, his dignity of, if he wishes, he does. If he wishes not, he does not. 
who is within the boundary of the horizon forever and ever. Lo, their soul is in the belly of Unas, their spirits are with Unas. His surplus of food is more than that of the gods, being cooked for Unas with their bones. Lo, their soul is with Unas, their shadows are with their companions. Unas is with this which appears, which appears, which hides, which hides. The doers of evil deeds have not power over the backing up of the earth. The favorite place of Unas is with those who live in this earth forever and ever.